Good morning, gang. Happy Memorial Day. I know not much happy out there when it's wet and rainy. And yes, that is Isabella. What's wrong, baby? It's icky out there. Trust me. And I, I'm very certain that quite a few Memorial Day parades have been rained out. But hey, Memorial Day isn't about parades. It's not about cookouts. But it's about the sacrifice of men and women everywhere who chose to put on a uniform and fight for our freedoms. And many of them didn't come back, so we need to show some gratitude, don't you think? Today, I wanted to share with you out of uh, what God showed me from his word. I was reading Psalm 51, in particular verses 7 through 17. And this is a very, very familiar psalm probably to a lot of you. This psalm is David's confession, his verbal and, and, and just heartfelt repentance to God because, over his sin of adultery. And he's asking God in this to not only show mercy and forgive him, but create, and, as he says in verse 7, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Now Isaiah 118 says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's a very big statement. And here he's, he's asking God to forgive him, to cleanse him of his sin, to restore him back to fellowship. He says further, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. He's referring to how God has broken him spiritually, convicted him, and how, how God's judged him. And he wants to be able to rejoice again. He's asking for that restored fellowship. He goes further to say, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. And he goes on to say, Then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. In other words, he's promising that he will be a living example of God's forgiveness that he will share that with others. He's asking God to please, to, to in, in 14 especially, he says, Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. But finally he says in verse 17, because he, he goes on to say how in, he wants to be able to sing God's praises. He wants... He wants that joy back. How many of you have gone through a situation where God's convicted you of your sin and you feel like, even though you've been forgiven, you feel like there's no joy? I know I've had that, and I've had to be reminded that I'm forgiven because I've confessed my sins to him, and I ask God to just bring me that joy, and God will. He does. He's asking God to, to, to give him praise, to, to, to give him back that joy. And he says in verses 16 and 17, which are something very crucial, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. And I want to go back to something in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Samuel and Saul, King Saul, are having a major conversation, to say the least. Saul's been caught in sin, and he's trying to excuse it and make light of it. And when you do that, it doesn't work. We, when we sin, we need to admit it completely before God, not try to make excuses and I believe that 
when we try to pass the blame off to someone else, that's a way of making excuses. But I believe when we come to the Lord and we tell him honestly the what, where, when, and why of what we're doing, of why we did it, I believe he honors that. And, he, and, and I believe that's part of confession. I know there are some people that don't understand that. Uh, I had a situation where somebody falsely accused me of minimizing something that I did against them. And I had to very politely and firmly say, excuse me, I am trying to apologize. This is my way of doing it. And she didn't understand, but she listened at least. Sometimes people don't understand that because I feel to me a, just a simple sorry isn't enough. I have to explain why I did this because I feel that that's my way and the only way to really rectify something so that that person understands. I'm not trying to make excuses or make light of what I did. And not everyone is like that. That's fine. But I know that God honors that. And here Samuel is telling Saul something very important. In verse 22 of chapter 15, he says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. God's not interested in vain sacrifices, in vain platitudes, but he's interested in a sincere heart, people. And that's what David's talking about as well. And it's something very potent, I believe, that we need to not just think about, but put into action. This is something I believe that is the main crux of the Dangerous Prayers series that Pastor Rob and, and others at Bethel Church were teaching on, and in particular, uh, Life Church. Pastor Greg, and I hope that you got to listen to Pastor Greg's sermon on Send Me. Uh, I, I put a, posted a link there. There's all three of the sermons there. Feel free to listen to all three of them throughout this week. I ask that you allow God to search your heart, to try you, your heart, and know your thoughts, to see if there's any wicked way in you. And when you see that, confess it. Ask God to break you. To break you of that sin. To break you of anything that is coming between you and him. This is what David did in Psalm 51. He was confessing and he was asking God to humble him and break him. And he was asking God to please forgive him and restore him back to him. Restore David back to God. David was so was so sorrowful over what he did. He felt he, he he stated God was justified in doing what he was doing to him because of the sins he had committed. He didn't try to, to pussyfoot around it. He said, Against you only have I sinned. And when we do sin, we're not sinning against others, sinning against a person. We're sinning most of all against God. And today, my prayer, what I'm asking, is that you allow the Lord to create in you a clean heart, to search your heart, know your thoughts, try them, expose any area in your life that is dishonoring, that contains sin, to help you not only confess it, but repent of it and forsake it. Ask God to allow you to become broken and spilled out for him, to allow God, to break you of any sinful habits that would infest you, clean, cleanse you of it. Take those broken pieces that he's allowed to be broken and spilled out to reveal something great in you. Let him put you back together his way. Remember the, the thing of Kintsugi? Allow him to make beauty out of those broken pieces. Let the beauty of God, Christ's forgiveness in you and the mercy and redemption that he bestows on you, be seen in you, in that brokenness. Submit your heart before the Lord, allow him to do this, and let others see this in you, so that they'll, if they don't know Christ as Savior, they'll come to know Christ. 
allow God to work on and within your heart to show you ways where he, he can not, not only cleanse you of your sin, to forgive you of your sin and, and forsake it, but also ask him, Lord, I'm not here to ask what you can do for me, but I'm asking right now what I can do for you. Help, I, I, show me ways where I can serve you, to bring glory to you, and let and be used of you to bring someone to saving, a saving knowledge to, to come to know you as their savior. And if there's any way that I'm resisting, making excuses, please show me and humble my heart in this area to be willing to listen. Help me to especially not respond like Moses and making excuses and, and saying you've got the wrong person. And especially help me not to be like Jonah and outright disobey you and run away from you. Because the more you try to run from God, the closer he's going to get to you. As I was saying before. And ask God. Ask God again. Lord, I'm not here to ask what you can do for me, but I'm here to ask what I can do for you. Here I am. Send me. Make that the prayer of your heart. Not just today, but every day. I want to go into more, you know, a little more on the Dangerous Prayers series on the rest of this sermon about Send Me. But today is a very important day. As I stated before, today is Memorial Day. I think every day should be Memorial Day. I think we need to honor and respect the troops that fight for our freedom every day. They put their lives on the line for us, and not only them, but I also believe our first responders, our police. And I, I want to state this. I know that people have issues with the police because there are those that are dishonorable, that disregard the law, that break the law. But not every cop is like that. I have a political blog in which I expose the wrongdoings that's going on in this town. But I have made it very clear that I don't believe that every cop is bad. I know that there are some in my town who need the Lord. They all, I mean, everybody needs the Lord. But there are those that really especially need salvation and they need to repent of the things that they're doing. And many of these people, they need to be removed from their jobs and they need to be in jail. But not every cop is like that. And we need to have respect for the office, that position. That person that may be filling that position, may be acting like a jerk, maybe acting like a complete you know what but that is still a position of authority that they've been given and if they're abusing it you need to expose them and make sure that others know of this and use the legal system to bring them to justice but we need to have respect and honor for those that are protecting us they have an awful job and they need to be appreciated. I have to get going. We have a, a bit to do today. I mean, it is Memorial Day. But I urge you all to remember and reflect on what this day really is. Reflect on the fact that we are forgiven by Almighty God. And that He's given us the opportunity to serve Him if we submit to Him. I have to get going, but I wish you all a very wonderful Memorial Day. And remember to thank those that serve and have served. And to those families that don't have loved ones anymore, give them a thank you too and give them a hug. Today's not about parades and cookouts, but it's about honoring those who gave their lives, those who sacrificed everything they had to defend our freedoms and we need to show them the respect that they are more than due especially those that are suffering in the VA as I said I gotta get going but I wish you all a wonderful Memorial Day bye for now